fifth grader at Seaton Prairie who came in fifth grade at the elementary school level. May I have a board member come up, please? acknowledge our children for their accomplishments. So we wanted to acknowledge them with the Spelling Bee, spelling bee Medal of Honor. So the three students that are not here are students from Colin Powell, but these are our elementary babies, so we want to make sure that they get their justice. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. distinguished employees who have made major contributions to their school and in the lives of children. We ask our principals to nominate an extraordinary and inspiring staff member who has the quality of egos. Egos know how to climb high into the air without working too hard. Some egos can even fly away with their prey that weigh more than they do. When an eagle first leaves the ground, it gains altitude by flapping its wings. The flapping motion causes air to flow faster over the top of their wings, and the bird rises, and therefore they soar. And Ms. Friday will bring forth our soar award awardees. Good evening again. May I have Ms. Rose Willard, if she's here? Ms. Doherty from New Armstrong? No, no I'm sorry. Mari Ace. Ms. Goodlow. Ms. Goodlow from New Armstrong. Ms. Tyler from Woodgate. We also have Ms. Bellamy Chapman. She's not a, she's unable to be here today. But the three people you see, a total of five, as Dr. Elford said, each quarter the principals have the opportunity to nominate one of their star employees. And this is our second quarter of the first year we have implemented this program. On behalf of the superintendent of board of education and your principals, thank you for all that you do. Uh, Ms. Tyler is a Care professional, teacher, third grade teacher, speech pathologist, and so we want to thank you all for everything that you do. If your principals are up here and they'd like to come and get you to the picture, that's fine as well. Is Ms. Etherly here? Yes. Ms. Gordon? 
Where's Miss Dr. Hill? This is not here. Yeah, you can stand next to her. Are there any other board members that would like to be in the picture? No, let me take it for you. So in your bags, you do have a plaque. I'll show you guys. Miss <laughs> Willard's here, but she's late. But let's get Miss Willard hers as well. You guys, let's slide back in place. Ms. R Ms. Miller is the Dean of Students at Seaton Prairie. Okay. Inside of your bags, you have a plaque that states uh, your pursuit of excellence in addition to a $50 gift card. This uh, Parent Recognition Award is to recognize parents who have completed our six-week Spanish course and is making a difference in the lives of our children. For we know the more our parents know, the more our children learn. And our parents have been in a six-week course in which they graduate here tonight. Let's give them a round of applause as Mrs. Uh, Jones brings them in. this year, and this is one of them. Uh, so it was birth, it was very successful. We started this program out with 33 participants. Tonight we have 18 adults and eight students who will be receiving recognition for the work that they have done over the six week period. So I present to you our 2020 <laughs> Spanish course graduates. For our students, it's Ms. Anna Garcia. Ms. Garcia is actually one of our Seton Prairie parents who's been in the district for quite a while now. So we're gonna have her to present her group first. Uh, 
We will be singing the ABCs in Spanish. Congratulations. Good job, boys and girls. Thank you, Ms. Garcia and Ms. Gomez. Okay, next we will have our adult Spanish graduates. Now, this is a unique group because we do have one administrator and one staff person that was able to join the group uh, because they are interfacing with students who are speaking Spanish and they thought it was a great opportunity to join and they were faithful, on time, didn't miss any and I'm just so proud of them, Dr. Alfred. I'm proud of Dr. Hill and Tammy King. <laughs> this year we have new Miss Sarah, she's gonna get me because I'm gonna mess up her name. Asario, I did it, yeah, all right. And then we have her son who joined her, uh, Mr. Abdiel. I do thank them, they were so faithful in, in the work and the preparation. They made the class so exciting that all of the students didn't want the class to end and I think that says a lot to them. Miss Sarah is new to us this school year. She's our Spanish teacher at Seton Prairie School. She's working with the kindergartners right now. And I just wanna thank you so much for being willing to take on this task. And you and your team have done a great job. Congratulations to all of you. So I'm gonna ask you to, um, as you present, just come to the middle of the floor. Good evening. Um, I just want to say thanks to all the members of the board. Ms. John, Ms. McCoy gave me the opportunity to teach the first Spanish course for parents. The parents were awesome and they learned a lot in these six weeks. Parents, thank you for giving me the opportunity to grow as a professional. 
with this experience. I'll treasure it. This spring, one time night, we're doing history and we're part of it. The group has been excellent and with no further ado, the Class of Spanish 2020. They want to present themselves in Spanish. So. <laughs> Hola. Mi llamo Sandra. Mi número favorito es el siete. Gracias y buenas noches. Mi favorita color es azul. Gracias. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Shana. Tengo dos hijos. Hasta cuatro amigos. Gracias. Hola, me llamo Julie. Yo nací en Nigeria. Disfruta de esta clase. Hola, me llamo Esther Tía. Mi, col mi color de favorito es morado. Gracias para tiempo. Buenas noches, mi Lu. Nombre es Mara. Estoy muy agradecida. Hola, mi nombre es Cristel. Uh, esta es una clase muy buena. Gracias para tu tiempo y tu paciencia también. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mi película favorita es Mujer Bonita. Buenas noches, yo soy Angel, soy amante de los libros y los versos, versos como puedo escribir los versos más tristes esta noche de poeta chileno Pablo Neruda. Gracias. Me llamo Ladipia. Disfrute mucho esta clase. Gracias. Oh. 
Hola, mi amigos. <laughs> Uh, buenas noches, me, me llamo Heidi, soy aquí en Mejía, Olamide, um, y gracias a todos. Hola, buenas noches, me encanta aprender español. Hola. Mi nombre es Andre. Yo tengo un hijo. Él es ocho años. Uh, me gusta la clase. Gracias. My turn. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Give them a round of applause. Awesome job. We would now like to present them with their presentation. Um, for completing a six-week course, they all will receive a 40-language um, translator device that they will be able to use all over the world. Where those languages are being spoken. <laughs> all right. Um, so you're going to come, Ms. Sarah, and present them. But before we do that, I'd like to present to you with a token of appreciation. Thank you so much. And Abdiel, Abdiel, would someone ask him to come out? Because we he's a very important part of the, the group. If you guys can get back in the order you came in, so you can come this way. You don't go this way. Yes. If the board would like to come up and help present these awards. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sandra Bauman. Stephanie Brownman. Latoya Clark. Tanisha Davis. Shauna Drew. Julie has spoken. Deborah Fullwood. Crystal Green. Dr. Antonia Hill. Chartia Jones. Tommy King. Crystal Perez. Angel Pia. Glady Pia. Debra Chakur. Heidi Shu. Montrese Weber. Andre Young C.
Crystal Green. Atiel, okay. Come, come over, please. Okay, okay. Atiel is Miss Sarah's son. He came to every class, helped with the class materials. He was phenomenal. We want to thank you for being a part of 159. Can we give them another round of applause? Thank you so much. Congratulations again to all of our awardees. We are so proud of them. We are going to have one more class before the year is out, and we hope many more parents take advantage of it. So thank you, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Mitchell, for your hard work and dedication into these programs. Before we go into a public comment, we'd like to uh, bring Dr. Brown forward for the financial dashboard. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Alfred, uh, members of the Board of Education. Um, in your board package, you should have uh, the, a copy of the December 2019 financial dashboard. Um, at the top of the dashboard, uh, going across the top is really where you would see uh, the financial operations for the month of December. Uh, what I'd like to kind of point your attention to um, is that second to last column for December of 2019. And this is where the board can really see the importance of having a, a healthy fund balance. Because in the month of December, our expenditures actually exceeded revenue. And that is not uncommon uh, when you have uh, an organization such as a school district that has cyclical income. And so most of our income is derived from property taxes. And um, as you all know, property taxes are collected twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. So we'll have a huge influx in the month of March when taxes are due once again, but as we're going throughout the year, we're really dependent on fund balances as well as state and federal sources. Um, for uh, the, the year to date, uh, if you look below at that second uh, kind of like section, that's going to give you your year to date revenues to expenses. And the fund balance uh, as of December 30, 2019, as you can see in that second to last column, was very healthy. Uh, we actually grew our fund balance by a couple of million dollars uh, year over year. 
And then below that, you can see a percentage of your total uh, revenues by source. The vast majority of our revenues is from local uh, income sources, which is going to be our property tax, our CPPRT, and any other local revenues that we generate, such as you know lunch revenues, things of that nature. So that makes up right around 80% of revenues. State and local uh, state uh, funding rounds out right about 14%, with the federal funding coming in just under 6%. Going over to uh, further to that, that uh, right hand column, you'll see the year to date, which is going to be your uh, budget comparison where we are as of December 30 relative to the budget. Um, revenues and, ex and expenditures actually matched each other uh, relatively for the month of, of December. So you can see we just received in slightly over 45% of total revenues for the year relative to the budget that was approved by the board. And then expenditures are right around 45% as well. In the Ed Fund, which is our largest fund, which is where the vast majority of our revenues as well as our expenditures uh, come in and out, uh, Ed Fund revenues were right at 47%, uh, while Ed Fund expenditures were right at 40%. Um, so as this uh, dashboard really shows, we're right around where we need to be uh, for the month of December, coming into about half the year or midway through the year. Um, and at this point, I'll uh, open it up for any questions with respect to the December financial dashboard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. And again, thank all our recipients and um, Mr. President. With that, I give my report. Dr. Alvin, what are your visitors? Audience to visitors. The first public comment or question is from Veronica Franklin. Please come forward. Thank you. First, I'd like to ask you what I'm is sorry. Project? I, I omitted um, stating that each person would have three minutes to comment. My question is, what is Project C? I saw that you tabled it at the very beginning of the uh, board meeting, but can you ex please explain to us what is Project C? It's been tabled. It'll be discussed later. So it's going to be discussed later. At future meetings. Okay. And this is supposed to be a board that ran on transparency. I have never seen Morse code on an agenda. This is Morse code, it's about as clear as mud. We should know what you are considering for approval under Project C. So and it's been tabled though. We it has been tabled, tabled, but it is a question that you can answer, tabled or not, and just ask what it is. It doesn't mean that you're voting on it. It doesn't mean that you're reviewing it. You're just, I'm asking you to tell us what is Project C. So you're not going to answer that. That's fine. Um, secondly, I'd like to know, have we taken care of the paper issue? Are we still rationing paper? Or has this uh, $16,000 that we invest in each of our children gotten us the paper and the tissue that is needed in the buildings? Not going to answer that one. OK. So um, I understand that you all are considering outsourcing all of the jobs for our custodial staff as well as our lunchroom staff, many of whom live in our district. And I'd like to know if someone can explain to us the benefits of this decision that you guys are considering. Okay, so I'm not going to answer that. Do you all see this is not transparent? 
They are not interested in our community. They make decisions for us on a daily basis. We have a superintendent of diversity and accountability at 130,000 a year, plus a secretary for about 40,000 a year, and we don't know what they do yet. We have a decision that is being voted on, and they won't tell us what it is. My three minutes is up. Stay woke. She says they were waiting on me to answer the questions. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's not that we do not want to answer your questions because I strongly believe in transparency. However, we did do self-evaluation with the ISBB, the um, Illinois Board of Education. We did a self-evaluation and they informed us that proper protocol is that we write you back in writing. We post all of our questions now on the web page and that way everyone, even the, those that aren't here, would get the correct answer and not give us something that's thrown off the top of our head just so that we can answer you in the proper way. So it's not that we're not trying to answer your question, it's more so we want to get the best answer for you and for the community. It is a political response as I am a former board member and I know all of that as I've attended all of those meetings as well. You can answer those questions if you choose not to. Thank you. Okay. It's not a law. The next comment or question is from Dwight Morton from Emerge Online Math Tutoring. <laughs> Mr. Morton. Under comments you have, you want to propose work with the district to provide online tutoring for students participating in the Chromebook Take Home program. Okay, you want to elaborate? Sir, how long is the video? We have three minute limit. 
Representative of Champions. Are you here, representatives of Champions? Regarding growth in programs this year, about the programs and district support. Good evening, Dr. Alfred and members of the board. My name is Cheryl Green, and I'm the site director for the Champions Program. I have been with the company for 19 years now and love all the children as my own. I am coming to you this evening with news of academic excellence within our program and my tremendous staff that has went above and beyond to do a job well done and believe in the kids just as much as I do. I was asked by Dr. Alfred and Mr. Payne to generate a portion of our curriculum and program to boost reading and mathematical skills. As of this summer, we have dedicated time to 30-minute reading activities and writing assignments to increase reading readiness in all our students. This fall, we begin an intense homework area with the children. We have broken up each age group and dedicate ample time for the children one-on-one -on -one help if needed, as well as spelling tests weekly <coughs> to prepare students for the test on Friday. From the start of the school year to now, I am happy to say that we have increased testing and grades by 80%. The children have become so dedicated on doing a, a great job that they constantly remind us that as adults, we should never give up and to always push forward. Good evening. My name is Katara Seuss. I'm the area manager for Champions. Um, I just met with Dr. Alfred last week, and I really wanted to emphasize on how proud I am of our staff at Mari Yates. We have taken this program um, through many different trainings in the last year and a half and um, partnered up with the school board. As you guys can see, we've been uh, attending almost every uh, board, board of Education meeting, and one of the things that we've done is take some of the uh, scores that you guys present and how do we bring that into our curriculum. Um, as of uh, January 15th, we were proud to partner with our teachers at Murray Ace and know that 97% of the children that attend Champions Program have a homework completion rate in our, our program. 
So what I've presented to you guys is some of the focus areas that we've been focusing on um, at Mario Yates for the last year and a half. Um, if you have, and I did put some pictures in the back so you can see our kiddos in the back having fun. Um, but just to outline some of the things that is happening in our program, and we look forward to growing with the district and showing some uh, positive results once our next um, testing time is uh, up. Thank you. Any questions for us? Yes? The completion rate of homework. So how many, 97% of the students that attend our program, yep, they get their homework done. I'd like to motion to recess during the closed session to discuss the employment, employment, compensation, discipline, collective negotiation bargain, and board self evaluation. Motion. Yes. Thank you, everyone.